the second age of racing. Today you have come up with an idea for a new series. I call it Sci-Fi Feasibility. From the second age of reason, of course. And what will this Sci-Fi Feasibilities be talking about? Well, it's going to be talking about flying through space <clears throat> in spaceships or using transporter beam technology. Some people call it transmat or T-mat or matter energy transfer. Going through space and spaceships or flying saucers or starships using fire, using nuclear, using ions, using gravity, using warp drive, using all kinds of things they talk about in sci-fi. <clears throat> to the point in our society where we talk about this stuff as if it's routine and already exists and some of it doesn't and weapons lasers and phasers and photon torpedoes and who knows what else and deflector screens and force fields and suspended animation and stasis and time travel, or travel of solid things, like some kind of a ship or vehicle, through solid things, like the ground, ships that go underneath the earth, or out in the lake, or oceans. There's other sci-fi topics, too. And what I want to do is explore each of them. They're so wide, it would take me a long time, so I'm going to break it into a number of videos. Even at that, uh, to me, the best video length is about three minutes. And this will probably be a, a series of eight to ten minute um, presentations. We could look at some of these technologies yet to be some of which are already here, and we'll explore how they're done, or how they could be done. For example, transporter beams are interesting because they can be done a number of different ways, depending on the technology you have and your point in history and what sci-fi series you happen to have chosen to be the one you're interested in. And it's not that far off now. An example of something that's already here, like lasers. But they really aren't lethal yet in terms of something you can carry in a holster in your pocket. But they can be devastating if they are powered from the ground from a large power source. Or sonic disruptors. They're already putting these things in Chicago for crowd control. They just hit you with a wall of sound and stun you. That's already here. In fact, I worked in a lab in 1978. Yes, 78. And they had a sonic disruptor. And what it could do is it could boil a beaker of water at 20 feet. And I just thought, Hopefully that doesn't fall into military hands, because that could be very uncomfortable indeed. And I'm sure you could think of other ways, other technologies that are in sci-fi. We talk about them all the time. Some people talk about um, like using antimatter for energy. Some people talk about using ZPG, zero-point energy. And so, they did banter about these terms, and yet, uh, people seem to take them for granted, just like TV. Because once upon a time, TV came out, and if you understood it, you were pretty advanced technologically at the time. And now, it's like, it's amazing that that thing even worked at all. But the other technologies, 
that are sci-fi, we take them for granted that somehow they'll figure it out. Some things may be impossible, and maybe not. So, we'll explore these in sci-fi. Uh, <laughs> forgot what I was going to say. We'll explore these new technologies in sci-fi feasibilities. Until later, we'll be seeing you. I think I have to be off. So if you'll excuse me while I saunter off into another dimension or up into space for who knows what. Bye-bye. Alien Eliminators. I think I better move. Oh, and a postscript for today from Sci-Fi Feasibility. I just thought I'd mention I happen to notice how Earth people seem to like to scribble in their sky. Look at all that. You know? It's like we're too close to see what it actually is, but it's probably just writing. And I know they call it chemtrails, but I bet you those are messages.